Tonight, thousands with no home to call their own. With 17,000 households in Scotland now living in temporary accommodation, charities are calling on the new First Minister to declare a national housing emergency. We've got record numbers of kids in temporary accommodation, private rents are out of control, and this is reflective of a national housing emergency. Also making the headlines, a case of mad cow disease is discovered in Ayrshire. A movement ban has been in place on a total of four farms as investigations continue. In sport, we hear from both sides ahead of tomorrow's crunch Old Firm Derby at Celtic Park. And the barber and client teaming up to support Scotland at the Euros. I'm John Mackay. This is the STV News at six. Good evening. Scotland's national badge of shame. That's how homeless organisations have described the number of people living in temporary accommodation. Exclusive STV News figures reveal almost 17,000 households in Scotland are living in a home they can't call their own. Charities are calling on the new First Minister to declare a national housing emergency. The Housing Minister says nearly £600 million will be invested in affordable housing over the next two years. Vanessa Taff has been speaking to one woman who's caught in the system. We've changed her voice to protect her identity. This is the mattresses we are, plastic mattresses for two years we're sleeping on. As you can see, it's not that great. This was only meant to be a temporary home for Chloe and her three children. But two years on from the marriage breakdown that left her homeless, she's still no further forward to getting a permanent place to live. It's hard because we get the kids and they keep asking when we get a house, when we get a house, and we're overcrowded. There's four years in the house and there's only two bedrooms. We've got two wardrobes to share between four. We've got plastic beds we're lying on. I'm not allowed to change the furniture because it's theirs. I mean, well, you're leaving me here two years, so I've got to try and make it kind of homey for me and the kids. To make matters worse, there are extensive problems with mould and damp in the flat. It's having an impact on Chloe's young son's health. He started to not eat food. He's really struggling with depression and that because of the state of the house. His asthma is really, really bad. He'll be sleeping in a damp room. He could touch the bedding, you feel the damp off the bedding. I've got to constantly wash and dry all our clothes before they wear them. But he's got to the stage he's eating a wee bit, but not as much as we're expecting him to eat. And how worried are you about him? I'm really worried. The whole family's worried about him. And Chloe isn't the only one waiting for a permanent home in Glasgow. Over the last two years, the number of households in temporary accommodation here has risen by 20%. In Falkirk, there's been a 47% increase. Fife, who have declared a housing emergency, have experienced a 25% increase. And in Edinburgh, there are almost 5,000 households in temporary accommodation, which is the worst of all council areas. These are terrible figures. They're deeply worrying and they're indicative of a bigger problem. It's not just these local authorities that are struggling. All local authorities, to a certain extent, are struggling. They're, they're trying to do more with less against a backdrop where we've got record numbers of kids in temporary accommodation, private rents are out of control. And this is reflective of a national housing emergency. And that's why we're urging Mr Swinney, as our new First Minister, to declare a housing emergency. In Edinburgh, those dealing with the acuteness of the homeless situation want urgent political action and a reversal of the almost £200 million of budget cuts. We are stuck in a really terrible stalemate where the need for temporary accommodation and the spend on that is so high that we are unable to free up the money that we really need for affordable housing. There needs to be a bigger injection of money or a better use of the money in order to break that stalemate. Housing is the heart of our economy, it's the heart of how people stay healthy, it's the heart of strong communities. They cannot avoid the fact that we have a housing emergency and they need to get more money in there. They made a political choice to cut 200 million out of it. They put a little bit back, but we need more. Glasgow's Health and Social Care Partnership told us they're aware of Chloe's circumstances and have tried to access the property to carry out repairs. They added that demand right now for housing far outstrips supply. An end to this temporary living situation for Chloe seems a long, long way off. Vanessa Taff, STV News.
The First Minister, John Swinney, chaired his first Cabinet meeting this morning since taking up the position. He then embarked on a three-stop tour of the country, taking in a visit to a hospital, a railway station and a farm. His deputy, Kate Forbes, has also been officially sworn in at the Court of Session in Edinburgh. Our political correspondent, Ewan Petrie, reports. Two days after being appointed, John Swinney's Cabinet gathered for the first time this morning in Butte House. His new team looks very much like the old team. Back to the table for um, after a little gap. The only change is that at the top, a new first minister and deputy. What? After the meeting, Kate Forbes headed to the court of session to be sworn in. The economy and Gaelic secretary took the oath in Gaelic. She then repeated her intention to be the Deputy First Minister for all. The First Minister has been absolutely clear that the Scottish Government intends to promote, to protect and to enhance the rights of every LGBT person in Scotland and I wholeheartedly endorse that position. When I joined Cabinet, as everybody does, I agreed to abide by collective responsibility. That is what I intend to do and I stand full square behind the First Minister as he seeks to serve everybody, including those in the LGBT community. Events have been moving quickly recently. It's less than two weeks since Hamza Youssef announced he was standing down. Now the formalities have been wrapped up, John Swinney is keen to show that the business of government under his leadership is underway. The first of his three visits this afternoon was to St John's Hospital in Livingston to see a new CT scanner being used to help tackle waiting times. The Scottish Government has failed to meet its four-hour A&E target since 2020, but has no intention of scrapping it. That's our target and I'll keep that target and we'll keep focused on that target to make sure we can deliver. I'm seeing the Health Secretary and the senior leadership of the Health Service uh, next week to begin the, the work of making sure that we deliver on those expectations because people need those expectations to be delivered and I intend to make sure that's the case. The First Minister also visited the Leavenmouth Rail Link in Fife due to open at the start of next month. Nice to see you. Good to see you. A project delivered on time and on budget. The Scottish Government will need more like this if it's to build bridges with voters. Ewan Petrie, STV News. Our political editor Colin Mackay is at the Scottish Parliament. And Colin, what a week it's been for John Swinney. What an incredible couple of weeks it's been in Scottish politics. I don't think I've ever seen quite so much move quite so quickly. John Swinney's only been First Minister for a couple of days and he does seem to be already calming things down a little. But just to raise the temperature again tonight, there's a warning from Unison that their members in local government could be about to ballot for strike action. That would be the third time in a row. The last time they closed schools, the time before that, the bins went unemptied. COSLA leaders are hitting out at the unions for going public too early in the whole pay talks process. So I asked the First Minister if he was going to have to step in. It's for local authorities to take forward the negotiations with their employees. But you've in the past had to step in. Well, we have, but we, we, we shouldn't always have to step in. You and personally have had to step well, in. That, 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 that's, that is factually accurate, but it doesn't always need to be like that. So what we'll Looks do, like it might need to well, be again. Well, what we'll do is we'll let local authorities take forward the negotiations with their staff. It's right and proper that's the case. And obviously, as part of our discussions with local authorities and trade unions, we'll encourage everyone to come together into a point of agreement. Well, you're prepared to step in if you have to again. We'll encourage people to come to a point of agreement. Now, there's also an opinion poll out today from Savanta which suggests that Labour are ahead of the SNP. And that comes after another bruising council by-election result in Kilwinning last night, which gave a 10-point swing from the SNP to Labour. But so far, the sun has shone every day that John Swinney has been First Minister. But we all know that the Scottish weather can change just like that. Scottish weather can be turbulent, but it's got nothing in Scottish politics. <laughs> Colin at the Scottish Parliament, thank you. Four farms in Ayrshire have been placed under movement restrictions after a case of BSE, commonly called mad cow disease, was discovered. Scotland's most senior vet says that whilst distressing for those connected, there's no wider risk to the public. 
Ollie Dickinson's report contains footage of animals suffering from BSE, which you may find upsetting. It's a sign of how far we've come that a condition which once devastated farming now has cases few and far between. At its height in the 80s and 90s, BSE, or mad cow disease, led to the destruction of four million animals. But Scotland's top vet says today's news, the discovery of a single case in Ayrshire, poses no wider threat. In the 90s, the 80s and the 90s, we were in the midst of an epidemic of BSE. Since then, controls have been put in place to stop that epidemic. We test animals routinely to make sure that our controls are working, to make sure that the level of BSE is very, very low, and if it was out there, that we would find it. The farm concerned has been placed under travel restrictions after the death of the animal. Three further farms are under similar controls due to using the same feed. We've restricted animals that had the access to the same feeding as the case during the first year of her life so that if anything else was exposed, if there was a problem, they won't get into the food chain. But I do have to e emphasise that this is highly precautionary. Meanwhile, here at Air Racecourse, preparations are ongoing ahead of the arrival of 10,000 people for the Air County Show tomorrow. And organisers say that confirmation of a case of BSE has come as a massive shock. Absolutely, yes. It's not the news that MD wants to be hearing in livestock farming. Um, I don't doubt people will talk about this for a long time to come. Tomorrow the show's going ahead as it would normally. We have had a few concerned exhibitors reach out to us this morning, just asking what this means for the livestock at the show. But we have had confirmation from AFA that the show can go on ahead with no additional biosecurity rules. Investigations and monitoring into and around the case are ongoing and will likely continue for some time yet. Ollie Dickinson, STV News, Ayrshire. Emirates flights from Edinburgh to Dubai will return this year. The airline has announced it will resume daily journeys from the capital from November. Flights will have 32 lie flat seats in business class, 21 seats in premium economy and 259 economy class seats. The Glasgow School of Arts has entered into arbitration proceedings with its insurers following the devastating blaze in 2018 which gutted the famous Macintosh building. The art school confirmed the dispute on the same day it announced it's preparing to put out a tender for architects to proceed with its planned reinstatement of the building. Those who struggled to get access to the health services they needed through the Covid pandemic claim they felt abandoned by the NHS. The Scottish COVID inquiry has heard evidence of the impact on health and social care. Oliver Wright reports. During the COVID pandemic, health services were stretched to breaking point, dealing with an illness no one had dealt with before. Kate Stott suffers from long COVID. The mother of three from Aberdeen was giving evidence at the Scottish COVID inquiry in Edinburgh today. I lost my memories completely. I lost the the memory of marrying my husband. Um, people, you know, people would ask me things and I just couldn't. I'd become housebound, I, I became bedbound. I couldn't move. Uh, the pain was insidious. Kate travelled to Germany to undergo private treatment that wasn't available on the NHS. After giving evidence today, she hopes care for those with long COVID will come quicker. I would hope that by now enough time has progressed to start action. Um, we're asking a lot of people to hang on in terms of just wait uh, and we'll get the answers and we'll get the treatments. Now's the time to stop that. It needs to start now. It needs to be urgent. Um, and I would hope that everyone is, is given a chance of recovery. The inquiry also heard of the impact of coronavirus restrictions on accessing other areas of the NHS, like maternity services. Those who suffered miscarriages were told without any chaperone present after struggling to get appointments for scans. Would you say that you felt supported by maternity services during this, this experience? Not in the slightest. I would say every single interaction I had with the maternity services was a disappointment and I felt let down. Every single one. The inquiry hears from healthcare professionals and charities next week. Oliver Wright, STV News. 
Overworked and under threat of violence, that's the message from two teaching unions at their annual conferences today. The Scottish Secondary Teachers Association claims excessive workloads are pushing the profession into crisis. Meanwhile, the NASUWT union says dangerous and disruptive behaviour in the classroom is only getting worse. Caitlin Hutchinson reports. I've been unwell. I've genuinely been unwell. Personally, I've been unwell because of the workloads I've been placed under. Teachers in Scotland are facing harmful levels of stress and burnout. It's kind of almost expected that you'll go part-time in your 50s or you, you retire. It's a, it's, a, it's a serious question about when can I go, when can I financially afford it because, yeah, it's exhausting. Unions say enough is enough. They want to see an end to excessive workloads and escalating classroom violence. I'm aware of members of staff being assaulted and that's quite frightening because I go to work I leave my wife and my children to go to work. They're expecting me to come home unharmed. And everyone has a right to go to work and come home unharmed. At today's conference, the Scottish Secondary Teachers Association claimed staff are working more than 25 hours free overtime every week due to moral blackmail. It's one of those phrases that raises eyebrows. But the reality is there is growing use of the teacher's desire to do the best for the children. And so when they are being asked to do things, it's not unusual for it to be caveated with the words, remember you're doing this for the kids. Monique believes additional support for learning teachers like herself are worst off due to cuts to staff and services. What worries me is the number of pupils not always getting the support they should be getting because of a lack of staff. At this stage, it has not affected me as much as it does affect a lot of my colleagues. But I have seen colleagues on the verge of tears. The Scottish Government insists a behaviour action plan is coming and that teachers in Scotland are the best paid in the UK. But ongoing problems with retention and recruitment paint a troubling picture. Caitlin Hutchison, STV News. Rowan's well, here. Much happening this weekend, Rowan? Really? Oh yes, big game at Celtic Park tomorrow. John Celtic against Rangers. Last league meeting between the two sides this season and we've been speaking to both managers today. Good evening. Brendan Rodgers has dismissed claims from Philippe Clement. He showed disrespect to Rangers. Clement was unhappy when the Celtic manager said his team were ready to have fun in tomorrow's Old Firm derby. Rodgers says that Ibrox boss's accusation is totally without merit. Well, we'll hear from the Rangers camp shortly, but first, Rory Charters has the latest from the Celtic squad. These were the scenes at the end of last season. Celtic once again lifting the Premiership title. Now, as the champions get set to walk out at Parkhead tomorrow against their fierce rivals, the match will be pivotal in where the trophy resides come the end of the season. A win for Brendan Rodgers' men, and the title is all but staying in Glasgow's East End. So it's a great opportunity. You know, that's, that's what you know, stands in front of us, you know, we have that opportunity to, to do that. But like you say, nothing will be won. We need to go and perform well. We need to work hard. We need to be intense. And uh, we need to ensure that our, our game is at a good level. Do you agree this is an almighty chance to more or less wrap up the title on Saturday? Yeah, I think mathematically it is. Obviously, you know, we, we if we win the game, then we'll go six points clear with, with two games to go. and and hopefully with a healthy goal difference. So, you know, you put yourself in a really good position after that to, to go on and, and try and win the league. After this win over Hearts last weekend, Rodgers says he was expecting his players to have a bit of fun when they face Rangers tomorrow. Something Philippe Clement said was disrespectful. Today, Rodgers responded. It was, uh, I think anyone who was at my press conference would have sensed and, and, and uh, the... The way in which it was said, it was, you know, the, the obviously the, the reaction to that is totally uh, without merit and it has no, uh, no context whatsoever. The Celtic manager has only lost one of his 16 games in charge of this fixture. A win tomorrow would be up there with one of his biggest. From being in a position of strength two months ago, Rangers have been playing catch-up in the title race. 
They are three points adrift of their city rivals with just three games to go. So is tomorrow's match a must win for Philippe Clement's side? I don't totally agree with that. So if you have a draw there, you still be, can become champion. Even if you lose, but that's a really, really long shot and too long shot for me. But uh, with a point also, but we go full for the three points. Clear. And these are the games that um, will live long in the memory of people and you've got the opportunity to, to create or at least start an end of the season that could be really, really positive for us. Um, it's certainly the way that I'm looking at it. It's an opportunity to, to do something special for this football club. Um, and tomorrow, away from home, is no better opportunity to do that. We can go all the way, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe and we can, we can get a win. There's no doubt about that. Rangers' last win at the home of their rivals was almost four years ago. That was during the pandemic, with no fans inside the ground. Tomorrow, Celtic Park will be packed with 60,000 Celtic supporters. Football is maybe a little bit like the, the gladiators of the modern age. In the old times, you have the gladiators there and you have this stadium full of people shouting and booing and doing or with their thumb up or with their thumb down. I think we are, we are now in, in that situation. So, no, they need to grab these moments to be really good gladiators tomorrow in the Colosseum. Hearts boss Stephen Naismith wants to face the best teams they can in Europe next season after group stage qualification was confirmed with a third place finish. The winners of this season's European trophies could open up an automatic place in the group stages of the Europa League to Hearts and Naismith is excited to test his side against quality opposition. We've got the opportunity with a qualifier no matter what to get into the Europa League. Um, and that's ultimately what it plays in the highest competitions you can against the best teams as you can. So, but listen, the, no matter what happens, it's all good. We've got group stage European football. The boys have experienced it a few years ago. Um, for others, it'll be an opportunity to play in that stage and, and show what they've got. Rugby and Franco Smith says his Glasgow Warriors side won't allow themselves to be distracted by the fact they sit top of the URC ahead of their doubleheader in South Africa. Warriors face the Bulls in Pretoria tomorrow, looking to remain in first place, but Smith stressed the team hasn't achieved anything yet. I know that we're all human here and we're still growing and there's still a lot of um, uh, experience to be gained in that regard. So this is another objective um, for us is to say, look, um, let's, uh, let's be a better team going back home regardless of the result. And, but uh, you are right um, that the boys have worked hard the whole season and, and I, I think that gives them confidence in, in the plan and in the approach for this week. And in golf, Robert McIntyre is the clubhouse leader at the Myrtle Classic in South Carolina. He's three shots clear heading into the weekend. That's all sport tonight. Have a great weekend. John. Roman, well, thank you. Uh, well, let's hope this good weather is going to continue into the weekend. Philip has the forecast. Hello, good evening. Well, over the past couple of days, high pressure has been dominating our weather, putting us into a southerly airflow. We've been dragging in that warmer air that's been lifting the temperatures. Tomorrow, those will be at their peak, reaching highs of 24 degrees Celsius for the likes of Al Nahara. At the moment, the forecast for Barcelona is highs of 21. So we can say that it's looking like we'll be warmer than at Barcelona. I'm going to put my weatherman hat on here and just remind folks about the UV levels. They will be rising to moderate to high given the amount of sunshine so if you are heading out and about do take the proper precautions let's take a look at what's in store over the weekend here is the forecast a spell of wows will gradually settle into a scattering of traditional tapas tui sponsors stv weather Well, with all the excitement around the fine, dry and bright conditions today and tomorrow, we need to remember that unfortunately it's not lasting long. I know, I'm sorry, but come Sunday, things are turning unsettled once again. We've got these frontal systems moving in from the West, bringing with it bands of showers. And it will remain changeable as we head into Monday and into Tuesday. Back to just now though, and it's a lovely end to the day for many of us. A largely dry evening and overnight period with plenty of clear skies. We could just see a bit of low cloud mist and murk around the very far west. 
Normally with clear skies, it does lead to a chilly night, but because we've seen a lot of sunshine this afternoon, temperatures aren't dropping too far, lows of around 12 or 13 degrees Celsius. There's been a lot of solar activity over the past 24 hours as well, so given the clear skies tonight, there's a very high chance of catching sight of the northern lights. Looking ahead to tomorrow, a fine, dry and bright start to the day. Lots of sunshine through the course of the afternoon. Later on in the day, though, that could spark off one or two very isolated, heavy, possibly thundery showers moving in from the south. But you need to be very unlucky to catch one. Temperature wise tomorrow, reaching highs of 23 degrees Celsius. Looking ahead to Sunday, like I said, turning unsettled once again. These fronts move in from the west. More showers around. Temperatures down a degree or two with highs of 19. Bye bye. TUI sponsors STV Weather. And finally, he went in for a haircut and came out with plans for a song, and not just any song. Along with his barber, Alan McNeil has recorded a football anthem ahead of the Euros, appropriately named We're On Our Way. Amy Flett has more. I can tell you one thing. With less than a month to go until the Euros, this unlikely pair have turned to music to cheer on the Scotland team. They've recorded their own anthem with all donations going to charity. The bulk of it was about two o'clock in the morning one night when I couldn't sleep and you get your phone out and you're scrolling through aimlessly and then you think, I'll try and put a few lyrics together. And that's where it, that's where it was born. So I came from my monthly haircut in January and John played me a pretty rough cut of the song he'd written for Scotland going to the Euros. And I said to him, I happen to know somebody who knows somebody with a studio, and if you were willing to help Prostate Scotland, then we can put you in touch with the studio. So, what do people make of the song? It's very catchy. Very I can Scottish. I yeah. hear myself singing along I to it. I hear my dad singing. <laughs> <laughs> we're on our way. Oh, I picked up already. <laughs> She's already got it. <laughs> That's really good, actually. It's very footballist. Like it. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, 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 yum. So, is that going to be stuck in your head now all day? It yes, will. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks for that. Train home, like. <laughs> Alan and John are now planning a music video and want Scotland supporters to join them. Football legend Ali McCoist and a few other well kent faces have already offered their support. The duo hope to release the music video in early June. Flat STV News, South Queensbury. It's got the right sound for a Scotland song, doesn't it? Uh, good luck to the guys with that. From all of us here, thank you for watching. Enjoy your weekend.